uh, let's start with the uh, very base of uh, navigating in parcel uh, it was just to uh, clear the screen cls just means clear the screen it does not do anything uh, except just clear your view like let's say uh, you typed uh, so many number of uh, lines here and uh, it, it might be having errors it might be uh, calling a script it might be just uh, you know showing you stuff like uh, write fnos uh, for example uh, so this is one of the native uh, commandlet so what it will do is whatever you type here let's say uh, this and uh, this is in your script I'll, I'll just create a script for now what i'll do is mm -hmm. Okay. One sec. Let me share this. I I boost. I send here. So I'm just going to call. One sec. He's just not able to see my screen because I'm just typing it out on a uh, different window. Just give me a sec. So basically, uh, if you want to look at the uh, file, uh, what are the files that are present in this specific directory, you'll use uh, a list. So list will uh, list you everything in your directory. You can use ls, but you can also use dir. Dir basically will, uh, means the same. So dir means uh, uh, what directory you're look, uh, looking into and, and the same thing. Uh, same thing works, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, uh, when I went around and used Linux or Unix, uh, uh, LS is part of uh, that, and uh, it's, it's similar in uh, Windows as well. Okay, I'm not going to do that, but instead, I'm just going to call the script that I just created, and uh, uh, partial scripts will have the extension PS1, and partial modules usually will have the extension PSM1 or PSD1. See, these modules uh, basically, uh, like, 90% of the time these modules are uh, will be created uh, by any specific uh, application host or any uh, application vendor let's say uh, you have a sql module right and that sql module will be uh, created by you and, and hosted uh, on a specific site i think it's in github now if you want to take a look so there will be different versions and th these are standard versions maintained so that business users uh, SQL business users, I mean, uh, of the software can install them and uh, these infrastructure people can make use of uh, the module and do their tasks or automate if needed. Okay. So what I did was just use the same line that I showed you earlier. So this is one of the native command. So I just did this. Yeah. So basically, uh, write FN host uh, uh, writes things to your uh, command line view. And uh, let's say you are uh, uh, using this script uh, to schedule something. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, remember this, I'll be going over, not covering just one point of the topic. So I'll uh, be covering multiple uh, uh, points of conversation and I'll just try and uh, uh, give it to you as well. Because let's say I, I go with a specific uh, uh, headline and uh, uh, at times it will be difficult for you because uh, there'll be uh, no background on what it is or why it is uh, that we are doing so I'll try and give you a more practical use case and more practical approach okay if you have any issues okay. just let me know okay, okay no problem uh, so okay so uh, this command let does that and nothing else and uh, let's say you uh, have uh, your automation you have your ps1 script that you've just created uh, let's say it uh, copies a file from a specific directory to another directory. Okay, uh, uh, you, you place that and you uh, schedule that. So it ran at some certain time today. And uh, uh, if you're using write as an host, it's after uh, in the script, after whatever logic you pr uh, build there, uh, use the uh, write as an host unless you, you're calling the script from this partial window you will not see this i see the other so right if host does nothing other than just uh, throw you stuff on the command line okay uh, and if you want to uh, log things uh, uh, when you're writing a script start if and transcript will be your go-to command line. so this is one of the native uh, windows commandlet as well so as soon as you use this uh, start if and script 
it will basically give you uh, the file name where this transcript is being uh, is being uh, written to and uh, uh, let's say you are uh, executing a script your task scheduler is basically uh, uh, being uh, said to start a script at a certain time and uh, the script is executing so if you are using static and transcript there it will write the file uh, but uh, you, you have to exclusively uh, stop this with stop hyphen transcript if you do not do this what will happen is the uh, content will be in the transcript but it will not be either readable or it will not uh, complete so uh, basically you're opening the file that you're creating okay uh, so this is one of the native windows command lines that will be useful uh, if you're not creating a separate log file uh, uh, for that case okay uh, basically if, if you want to handle uh, uh, logs for whatever scripts you write uh, for example uh, as you said there are a lot of stuff to automate you have let's say in about a month you have about 10 automations okay 10 partial scripts and how, how do you know which one uh, succeeded which one failed and uh, if there's any uh, let's say you've written a script such that it will throw you the error on the screen itself so uh, let's say you're using right diagnosis how will you know what exactly happened uh, what exactly happened throughout the throughout the execution of the script and if there's any errors thrown any warnings thrown how would you know what happened right in those cases log files will help you uh, so when you're starting uh, freshly uh, log files might not uh, necessarily help you but as you build more automations uh, it will help you for your infrastructure as well and uh, for any of the uh, uh, automations that you do uh, it will keep you a fail safe let's say uh, you run something destructive and uh, let's say you're deleting something or you move just moving something and if it does not move some uh, from your source to the destination you'll not know right you, unless you simply uh, let's say someone is uh, looking for the file in the destination and you ran the script uh, so you're certain that it should be in the description but uh, destination but they can't find it why right? they can't find it uh, so in those uh, cases where it failed for a specific file this uh, uh, transcript or any other logging methods for that matter will help you out okay? and uh, to to navigate to a different folder uh, what you can do is uh, use cd so uh, cd means change directory and uh, to uh, so basically uh, uh, you can give your entire uh, full file path is what it is called so uh, cd and then first the drive letter and then the folder name whatever it is you can go like this or relative path uh, to, to use a relative path you can just do cd temp because i know temp is a folder uh, within the uh, admin folder in the under users in the c drive okay so this will be called relative path but uh, if i use uh, c users and this will be called the absolute path and uh, uh, any scripts that you use try and uh, 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 call the absolute path first uh, and then execute your script um, uh, to, to write files to uh, any relative path stuff like let's say uh, i'm writing a script so it is to uh, move certain files from this directory to a different directory i'll first switch to this directory and then call anything like new iphone file or new iphone uh, folder and things like that uh, and then creating it with a relative path and then will be giving my file name something like uh, this new file dot txt and something like that okay uh, so uh, most times i'll uh, uh, the best approach is to use the absolute and, and not the relative path okay use these Okay, test hyphen. So we covered that. Partial models. Okay. Okay, and uh, like I said earlier, uh, uh, most of the applications that you see on Windows, if it's not native and you have some sort of a business license. Uh, attached to it, uh, there'll be uh, modules uh, uh, developed 
by the same vendor or the same uh, application team that gives you the app okay it will be either hosted on github or on the microsoft side itself or the vendor side itself and to uh, install the modules you can either uh, uh, download the module file and then uh, run it on your own on the machine that you're going to use that uh, module and uh, let me show you what all the installed modules so get hyphen module is also another native command like you don't need to import or install anything you can just uh, do get hyphen module and then it will give you all the modules that is currently installed in this machine so uh, let's say you are using sql and if you installed uh, uh, another module sql module here you'll see uh, the sql module in in one of these lines it doesn't have to be exactly in the bottom or the top so uh, similarly uh, the number of uh, modules you install this list will go on and uh, there is a switch called list available uh, basically list available will look up the entire system uh, uh, get a module will not give you uh, the exact number of modules uh, not all the times unless it's in a certain directory the modules in a certain directory uh, iPhone list available will give you uh, so this is basically a switch. So this is the command get fn module is the command iPhone list available is the switch uh, Basically shows you everything that is uh, installed on this machine. You see this uh, So if it's not in a certain directory stuff will not show up um, unless you use this command left and then uh, Let's say I installed uh, about 10 modules. How do I know uh, which version of the module is in? So basically what will happen is uh, the uh, uh, application vendors they'll create uh, different versions each time let's say in about six months uh, they create a new uh, module for sql and uh, the older modules is basically deprecated and depreciated and you'll have to uh, go on with the newer version of the module and if you want to see which version is installed uh, you can do this so basically uh, uh, this is called a pipeline this pipe symbol so uh, if you shift and then uh, uh, do a, a forward slash or shift and select the forward slash this symbol is called pipeline okay so basically what pipeline means is it will just give you uh, throw whatever is present between uh, before the pipe uh, to uh, to whatever command or uh, line that you are executing after the script will just uh, basically means this uh, just uh, for now uh, think of uh, whatever is present between before the pipeline as the input and whatever we are trying to uh, 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 use on uh, after the pipeline uh, to be taking that input and then uh, massaging it or uh, rather uh, using it to achieve a certain task okay uh, so uh, here what we will do is do a select iPhone object so uh, we need to look up a specific uh, version of a specific module right so to do that uh, you'll pipe it and do a select if an object select if an object will uh, uh, let's say you give a valid case uh, after select if an object will look up a certain uh, uh, property of this uh, commandlet and then uh, let's say I want to look up uh, the name of the commandlet and then do a search like that like uh, do a filter there and uh, I want to use this app background task as my name of the object so uh, so uh, uh, whatever uh, filter that you're going to use for selective an object you have to declare it within these curly braces okay uh, okay so get a module why I picked this is uh, uh, this is something that you have to know uh, uh, for a certain like absolutely you should know this command uh, like I said uh, this will be used uh, to verify so our task right now is to verify uh, if uh, a specific version of uh, verify what version of the uh, module is currently installed for uh, let's just call windows search okay it's a manifest windows mm -hmm. error report. let's just pick this so actually not select a variation object because you're going to look up uh, a certain module you'll use pair iPhone object and then I'm going to uh, look up uh, the name field of the module okay so basically what it does is where if an object look for everything within this name field and uh, 
this header and it will look for a certain uh, string match. So what I'm going to do is just mm -hmm. do hyphen eq means uh, this name will be equal to. So now I'll call this. Yeah, what uh, this means is uh, so I'll first get all the modules installed in this machine and then pipe them out to uh, look at this filter. So what this filter uh, looks up is to look up all the objects and then it will look up on this specific uh, uh, field or this specific parameter. So the name of the module dollar underscore dot any uh, a property of the uh, of the command line that you provided before the pipeline, uh, you'll call it uh, by using this uh, syntax. So dollar underscore dot basically means uh, to, to look up the name parameter uh, of this commandlet. Okay, uh, so this is one of the property, not a parameter. Property of whatever output is received from this commandlet. So it will first initiate this part of the line, and then it will look up this specific property, and then it will look for this specific string. So let's just run this. Okay. If you see here, it just gave you that specific script and nothing else. Yeah. So that's what where if an object uh, actually does. It will filter and uh, look up this uh, filter, whatever that you're providing it to. And mm -hmm. we can verify that the version is one. Uh, there are other methods to verify which. Okay. Uh, let's say I want to just display the version of it uh, before I do that. Okay. Let's go to uh, more. Uh, Easier samples. Okay, sure. Like your request. No, no, uh, I'm good. I'm getting this. I'm good. I'm getting this. You can. Uh, he is just so well with the amount of uh, output that he just thrown at you, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's no problem at all. Okay. Um, so, to create any variables or or let's say constants for now, uh, uh, you'll have to use the dollar sign and then just call. Uh, 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 create your variable here and then let's for now call it string sample I remember if you already using uh, the so basically what this means is I just created a sample it will have a, a string as the data type and then it will contain this as the value and if i uh, start if i try and uh, read what's present within uh, in this uh, variable i'll just call the string sample and i can see that i have the commandlet within it okay uh, uh, so uh, there are certain uh, uh, characters that are uh, that you have to escape. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if there's any escape characters in SQL. So uh, what basically happens is when you're trying to uh, create a string, uh, it will not uh, be able to read this unless to uh, unless you escape it. To escape any characters when you're creating a string, you can use this. This is called backtick. So what will happen is if you just uh, uh, so. Uh, if you take a look on your keyboard, there will be a tilde symbol. So this will be your tilde. Uh, so if you hold the character shift and then uh, so it will be next one. So this will be tilde and this will be back. Uh, used to basically just uh, uh, escape a single character. And let's say I have uh, two more dollars and let's say I have uh, uh, any characters, any keywords. Uh, that is uh, native to parcel and uh, if you want to uh, Define it within a string or if you want to create it within a string uh, Because like you saw in the earlier sample it just uh, does not read it or it's not uh, save it to your uh, 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 Variable you escape it and then now if you take a look Basically as the character that you escaped it, okay uh, What it means uh, to to escape and then uh, to just uh, write stuff uh, uh, there are certain uh, syntax uh, within partial that you need to uh, follow okay uh, 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 let's say you use any keyword uh, that is reserved and uh, some keyword like 
let's take a look at the partial reserve key which let's say exit and uh, basically exit is a reserve keyword which uh, let's say you want to print something uh, to your screen uh, just stating uh, I'm exiting the script so you want to print this in your log file how you basically want to uh, uh, let's say after a certain logic you're displaying this as an output uh, uh, in, in your log file just to show you that uh, that specific uh, part of the script is completed and uh, the complete script is now done and uh, you're writing this to your log file and uh, in, in cases like exit uh, command lets like exit and stuff like that what uh, it basically means is to terminate your partial uh, window or script to be exact if you calling the keyword called exit will basically end your entire script uh, then and there okay uh, I'll, I'll tell you uh, I'll give you logics on how uh, to uh, handle uh, uh, escape uh, characters and what are the command lets that you shouldn't call or uh, the keywords that you shouldn't use within your script and uh, things like that. For now, let's manage napkins, modules, partial remoting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll also want to cover partial remoting. So uh, Let's say you want to do automation and uh, they basically gave you uh, about five servers and uh, you want to execute something or uh, you want to look uh, a specific uh, uh, specific uh, registry key or, or a specific uh, uh, directory and, and, and basically you want to look up the same uh, uh, sort of uh, metrics on all five machines and there is either a commandlet uh, uh, that you can run or there is a script that you can run on all the five servers and uh, you don't want to do it uh, uh, five different times right this duplication of your effort in those uh, certain cases invoke iframe command and then computer name so basically uh, computer one computer two it can also be your IP so you if uh, this is a domain joint machine and you basically have uh, remote access and uh, same credentials uh, are being used between these computers on the, uh, and the computer that you are uh, creating uh, uh, running this commandlet on. Okay, invoke hyphen command. What it means is uh, you'll use this commandlet and then give it the number of computers or the number of machines that you want uh, this to run on in the script block. Right, hyphen host. I'll just explain to you once I've written this running this on all three computers okay so what it means is uh, it will just uh, run this command line try right? and host running this on all machines uh, to all these three computers on all these three computers to be exact so uh, where this will be helpful uh, let's say you want to uh, uh, you, you want to run a specific uh, parcel file uh, which moves files uh, from a certain directory in C, let's say C uses admin uh, to C uh, uses admin temp. You want to move all the files between uh, uh, this two directory. And this uh, can certainly be achieved just by a single script, but uh, you have the script placed on all the machines. Let's say you have 10 machines and you want to execute it on 10 machines. Now you, you don't want to wait on the task scheduler, which is running uh, differently on all the 10 machines, and you want to just uh, uh, run all those scripts at a time on all 10 uh, different computers you can just uh, use uh, make use of this commandlet and uh, and uh, uh, instead of write iphone host uh, it, it basically gave you an error i wanted to show it to you because i wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you what exactly will uh, work in the back end when you try and invoke this invoke from command it will connect to each of the computer if you see this you can see the error connection to remote server computer computer one failed with the following error message basically this is not a valid computer name or valid machine name or uh, a valid server name and hence it's giving you that error but uh, if you give it a valid server name 
it will basically try and execute whatever is present within the script block on uh, on all each of the machines basically get into computer one run this computer two run this and you don't have to manually get into each of the servers this will help you a lot okay okay um, so and, i have a question for you for example i have uh, currently i have a two computers um mm -hmm. so i can write the uh, the name where you mm -hmm. said uh, write computer one computer two and mm -hmm. do i uh, that mean i need to also mention the task yeah, you have to mention the task, uh, so, the task name. Okay, uh, so by task you mean uh, 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 the script file or to look up? Uh, uh, just give me yeah, a the, brief. Uh, 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 like you said, a um, task scheduler, for example, for uh -huh. like the one of, yeah. I have a one ETL process in one computer and the second mm -hmm. and process into the second computer. Yeah, you can certainly look, uh, look that up. So uh, for doing that, uh, let's say I want to look a certain process within this machine. So get iPhone process will give you all the processes on that machine. So let's just pick a certain task now. Uh, it doesn't matter what, but uh, on your uh, on your specific uh, automation journey, let's say you want to look up a certain task. You said ETL task, right? Let's uh, just think that this is your ETL task for now. So you'll look up the different process and then look for the certain process and you'll get either get the process name or the ID of the process name. Uh, basically, just pick the process name because the IDs will uh, differ as it uh, executes. Okay, it's it's not uh, reserved. So pick a process name and uh, let's do get if and process and what we learned before select if an object. I mean, sorry, where if an object to filter that specific process out of the entire dot process name because i saw the header name was process name and i'm going to look up this specific string okay Not process name text input host ah come on <laughs> sorry uh, okay so to copy and uh, stuff like that what you need to do is uh, take your mouse you can just drag uh, uh, uh just uh, select uh, uh do a left click once and then drag and then it controls it will just basically copy it to your uh, uh, uh what do you call it clipboard and then you can just uh, paste it away with control v and stuff like that or you can also use like like this and then do edit and then mark and then mark the stuff you want to copy and then hit enter it will just save it to your clipboard so uh, a more modern approach would be just to uh, selecting and copying it okay uh, so uh, uh, there are versions of uh, partials that where you can't do uh, and you have to use edit and then mark and then do stuff like that but yeah that's not the case anymore so first yeah. i'll, I'll verify like i'm able mark. to get that uh, -huh. uh i don't know how what do you mean like select and mark uh, i i never did tell that so what is uh, that this one i don't know you're saying there was like a, uh, there's a two way to copy the task uh, yeah, yeah yeah no problem i'll explain it to you again so uh just uh like i said uh, natively you can just uh left click and then highlight whatever you want and hit control c mm -hmm. or uh in the partial window itself uh okay it's it's because you're not able to okay right click on the partial window one sec uh on the top uh, uh i'm sharing this as an app yeah, let me share this share my entire screen first so that you can see sharing options okay, yeah, okay. Uh, now i'm sharing my entire screen wait for it to load uh, right click on the top so basically this will be your uh, uh, application partial application right click on this go to edit and then select mark so this was the uh, uh, legacy way of copying stuff. Uh, you can use the same in, uh, uh, in your uh, Windows command prompt as well. Uh, and press enter to copy this, whatever you mark. Basically right click, edit, uh, mark, and then copy the stuff that you want. Okay. And, and then enter, then... it'll just, yeah, it'll save it to your clipboard. You can then uh, uh, paste it away, okay. 
so paid control v uh yeah just do a control v i don't okay. want to load up so basically i uh control v the line see this mm -hmm. okay got you now sure I think I'll switch this back to sec, one sec, just give me a sec. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, so basically this uh, will look up a, a specific process name and you want to see uh, if this process is running or not, uh, so what I'll do is okay for now just uh, uh, Let's say we want to run this uh, certain commandlet uh, on uh, about uh, 10 machines, okay, and then what I'll do is invoke iPhone command Like I said earlier and then the computer name and computer names 1 till 10 Let's just call 1 and 10 for now and then the script block will contain What I want to run on all these machines? So basically what it will do is it will execute this line and on all uh, 10 machines and then give you the results on the partial itself uh, It'll uh, Yeah, for now I can't run it because I don't have a computer connected locally or uh, I'm not uh, connected to any domain so I can't look it up I don't have any valid machines like that, but basically what uh, it'll do is the same uh, run that uh, certain commandlet on all 10 machines and uh, you can also uh, run a certain script uh, in this and to run a script you can just call the script Script block. Let's just call the script something like retro script dot ps1 so uh, so this uh, uh, Because I've given a relative path here to look up uh, the script on this specific directory and if you have the script on uh, any certain uh, uh, directory that is not uh, in this uh, 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 currently uh, current directory what you will do what you will do is just uh, give that a little path uh, I mean uh, give the absolute path. Let's say it's in the F drive under You have your own folder and the uh, let's call it script one dot ps1 basically what it will do is it will take the script from this uh, Machine that you're running on and then execute it on all these machines all these computers and give you the so basically uh, Let's say you have the results stored uh, locally or you want the results stored on a specific uh, uh, SharePoint site and things like that you can uh, make use of it uh, I mean do that on your script itself or you can uh, write those to a log or uh, Alternatively uh, your script can have lines like uh, the right of nose that we had earlier uh, it can denote that uh, this uh, process block has been executed and uh, uh, We expect uh, we have moved uh, this number of files from uh, this directory to another directory and things like that and basically just do uh, things like uh, th There can be certain scenarios where you want to make use of this uh, People will ask you to look up uh, a certain registry and about all the machines and uh, uh, In certain scenarios logging to each machine will take you a lot of time This will certainly help you out in in, in uh, enterprise infrastructures, okay? Okay, uh, so what I'll do is I've, I've uh, we have another 10 minutes so what I'll do is I'll give you a, a, a simple thing uh, to execute I want to okay before we do that I'll also give you another commandlet so that we can test your knowledge right test type and it's like Let's say I want to verify that I uh, have a file called this is admin. Is that called hi? Yeah, hi dot ps1. So basically, what test hyphen path does is it will verify that the specific uh, file or uh, directory exists. So it will just give you a Boolean uh, value as a result. Or what it will do is it will check if this specific uh, script is there. And then give you uh, the result. So I basically uh, uh, it, It's true here because there is a file called i.ps1 on that uh, file folder architecture Let's call something else and it will uh, throw you a false. So this is basically to see 
if, if uh, let's say you move uh, the files around like you uh, uh, said earlier on in your script and you want to see uh, if the files have been moved you can basically use test step in path and then uh, look up that specific file or let's say you create a directory and you want to uh, make sure that directory is created uh, what you do is let's say, do this and yeah because the directory is valid it will give you true if i give anything else it will just give me first basically make use of this and then uh, write your own uh, logic let's say i want to write something that's sitting and and if uh, if the above condition is true i just call it uh, directory found or uh, directory not found directory not found please take a look and things like that in your log file so that you can later uh, take a look at the log and see what exactly uh, transcribed and uh, uh, do uh, uh, do task the to uh, prevent that or sort of uh, go over your errors and stuff like that so uh, I'll, I'll give you a simple task uh, so i want you to uh, just uh, 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 do you have your uh, uh, are you connected to any machines right now like uh, uh, where you can execute certain commandlets i can give you a, a specific uh, use case or a specific uh, 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 example for that matter and i'll see uh, how far you uh, go and then i'll help you out so that we can cover whatever uh, uh, we've been uh, learning today is that okay cindy uh, not actually connected with any specific uh, uh, not a server your local machine would suffice my local machine uh, so right now i don't have any power cell in my local machine basically do i need to install it yeah, yeah, it no is all uh, no problem for now for, for the next classes for the oncoming classes uh, you can uh, do that because uh, you know unless who i am stating this is not to like uh, stress you on to doing stuff uh, unless we uh, you actually uh, try and execute actually, i do have work. power cell uh -huh. okay. you're partial yeah if you can yeah, I do. I'll, I'll give you a simple uh, task to achieve and then uh, okay. we'll, uh i'll basically help you out if you're stuck somewhere and you know okay. uh, if we try this out as soon as we learn it will really uh stick it to your mind and these are some basic things that you need to know okay, sure. okay. 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 And, and this will be the same for all other modules that we're going to cover. I mean, uh, whatever I teach, I'll try and uh, give you a simple uh, sample or example that you can work with. And then uh, if you have issues with that, I'll help you out so that it sticks well to your mind and you can basically use it and then not just theoretically know or, or see what I'm running, okay? Okay. Okay, so do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, go on, share your screen. I'll, I'll make you a presenter. Okay, okay sure. Uh, so uh, I need you uh, to look up uh, a specific process name and, and to see, uh, uh, just give me, print me out the uh, SID of the uh, of any process for that matter just to uh, uh, look up on all the processes pick a specific process and and just try and print the or just throw the uh, uh, process ID of that specific process it can be anything yeah. mm -hmm. um it's get process or something it's get iphone process so usually all the commandlets uh, uh will will have something like get iphone or set iphone not underscore iphone yeah and and if you have a doubt on what the process uh, uh, commandlet is do just mm -hmm. get iphone pro c e s uh, just do it with a single yes and knit tab and as you keep tabbing, if there's any other command like that, let's say get iPhone process and name and stuff like that, though it's not a valid command, it will uh, just show you. Just hit tab once. No, no. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, hit tab arrow once and hit tab, I'll tell you what exactly happens. Hit tab arrow once. Um, okay. Upward facing here. And then hit tab, the tab key on your keyboard. 
uh, you see this it, it sort of resolved it to a uh, nearest matching commandlet and uh, if you have anything else uh, after process or uh, let's say there's a command like i said uh, if there is a, a mm -hmm. commandlet called processor and yeah it will basically resolve that so uh, this is one of the feature that you can make use of uh, and if you're using uh, visual studio of course mm -hmm. uh, as you type yeah that's right uh, as you type get fn you'll get a list of all the command lists that you have and you can uh, suddenly work with your id and in case you're not going to work with your id this will help you basically tab away to to look up what you're trying to look up and, and if you only know part of what you're looking for okay okay got it okay now pick a specific process and just uh, show me the id alone just print the id alone any process ID. yeah I want you to look up a, a certain press process filter it and then just give me the ID of that specific process yeah. Okay, scroll a little up mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a uh, Pick the certain process mm -hmm. And take the ID yeah, you can use ID to filter mm -hmm. Now try and filter it out alone. Uh, you can uh, just type A on, and things like uh, just type A on your machine. Okay. Ah, see, uh, it took you there. It backspace and then type whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. Um. I missed. I don't know exactly. Okay, no problem. So what you need to do is, like I said, uh, you need to use a pipeline now uh, to, to make oh, yes. a filter or select. You need to use a pipe. Uh, so that's a slice. Yeah, it shift and do that. Yeah. So now you've piped it. Uh, now you want to filter it. And to filter it, do you recall what command it is? Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Action object. Uh, object. Okay. All right. Hit tab sure. if you have uh, doubts on what exactly the command letters just hit tab it will just resolve you okay. now, uh, yeah. uh, no. yeah yeah type it around I'll, I'll tell you where equal um, no sign That mm -hmm. yep, yep, you're right. And and remember, you copy the ID of the process instead of the process name. So here you need to use dot ID dot underscore dot ID ID. Yep. And then do uh, so. Uh, so this is your uh, first part of the match. And then uh, you want to compare this with something else. And to do that, you have to use any. Uh, sort of operand so operand is is what uh, uh, does your operation what specify it uh, specifies what operation you want to do like how you do a plus minus and and, and divide and stuff like that uh, you're going to use equal here so to do that you have to use a space unless you use a space it will not know the difference between yeah operator and operand. okay iphone iphone uh, for now just let's take a look at all the uh, 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 Operands that are present just it keep hitting tab to see what are all present. Yeah Yeah, see and as yeah, keep tabbing Or not XR contains equal to See in like and less than match and stuff like that. So you can make use of this to uh, to uh, Do a certain lookup uh, between the uh, first and the second uh, Values okay, see split and stuff like that. You can just hit backspace now uh, and and do iPhone and EQ iPhone and EQ means uh, it will look for exact uh, match here yeah. EQ means equals EQ. and then and now you want to define a string which will have the process ID that you just copy to do that uh, Yeah, and yeah Just try and look it up now and instead of uh, your Braces you you have to use curly braces when you're Trying to use where if an object, yeah, yeah, do the same on the. Oh, okay. 
so basically you make also, use of your uh, yeah, yeah just go left and uh, no use your uh, uh, left arrow to to navigate uh, to that part of here and then delete it mm -hmm. okay also delete the iphone eq after where if an object where if an object is the command let and iphone okay. eq is not uh, okay, okay. Oh, wow. No problem. Uh, okay. So, uh, if you delete key, it will uh, remove the character after the uh, highlighted uh, word, or if you backspace, it will uh, delete the current word. Okay. Uh, this is one of the navigation you need to learn. Uh, just uh, try it and see what happens here. Type something, do delete and backspace, and you'll know what exactly happens. Okay. Okay. So delete does this, and if you uh, uh, backspace does this, if you delete, mm -hmm. right and delete, create it. Okay. 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 No problem. For now, just give the uh, ID. Yeah. Now it enter. So it basically looked up that specific ID and gave you the process name and and uh, and stuff like that. You can, uh, yeah. This is good. Uh, uh, this is why exactly I wanted you to run this uh, because you you'll not have that feel uh, to you. You'll not know how to exactly unless you run certain things. You'll not know all the practical difficulties or the operational difficulties that you can expect. Like here, uh, how how you, we didn't know how to use get iPhone process. It is get iPhone process and not just get process. Things like that and uh, backspace and delete and and that's why we totally do this practical part and i'll be doing this uh, towards the end of each of the modules that we cover so that we okay. know we have some sort of a grip or what we covered on that day okay okay, okay then. Mm -hmm.